Hello, today I'm going to discuss the subject of quantum physics and mathematical Platonism, namely uh, some of the paradoxes that arise when we attempt to apply mathematical Platonism to quantum physics. I am going to be the very first to admit that my background in physics is not commensurate with uh, my background in mathematics or philosophy. I don't, uh, I don't claim to be an expert on this area. So what I'm about to present to you is more speculation on my part in terms of how to address the problem of how we apply the infinite, the infinity of the real numbers to a discussion of quantum theory, namely the idea of a discrete universe, discrete electron shells, um, Planck's radius, uncertainty, do we live in an infinite or do we live in a discrete universe, I think would be, well, the central paradox is this. If we say that there is such a thing as mathematical Platonism, it does not appear to apply in the quantum realm because the quantum realm is discrete and therefore, according to the objection that has been phrased, therefore, we cannot really invoke mathematical Platonism as having any kind of reality to it. And I think it's an important question. Uh, for one thing, one potential way I would address that objection would be as such. Um, just because mathematical Platonism doesn't necessarily apply to something, that, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. In other words, um, the infinity of the real numbers, according to mathematical Platonism, the infinity of the real numbers would have an existence in and of itself. It would not be something that would be contingent on necessarily having a one-to-one -one correspondence with any physical reality. Quantum reality would be its own reality in and of itself, just like uh, relativistic reality on the macro scale would be its reality in and of itself. And regular Newtonian reality that we deal with in our everyday life, more or less, would be a reality in and of itself. We don't, <clears throat> according to the real hardcore school of mathematical Platonism, that I would subscribe to. We do not necessarily need to have uh, mathematical Platonism apply to quantum physics in order for it to be valid. I go with Roger Penrose in stating that there, well, Roger Penrose believes that we interface with the mathematical realm through a quantum process. You know, I, I, don't, I don't recall specifically how he believed that that was something that we did, but he seemed to invoke quantum physics and believe that our brain had a quantum aspect to it. I don't necessarily buy that idea. I think personally I believe mathematical Platonism can be understood as a realm in and of itself and that there may not need to be a need to appeal to the natural sciences just like there isn't necessarily a need to appeal to the natural sciences in a mystical state or in some kind of other realm of consciousness. The natural sciences may describe a realm, a, a level of existence, but I'm not a reductionist and I don't necessarily believe that they uh, would describe the whole thing. Now there is another possible, and again, I am not an expert on quantum physics, but this is something that I wonder, and I want those of you who are experts on quantum physics to comment and give an opinion one way or the other, and that is if I have a uh, a uh, de Broglie wave here, and I have the, um, this is supposed to be a photon and an electron. This is supposed to represent the photon in the lowest possible energy state. I'm sorry, the electron in the lowest possible energy state, a photon of the right wavelength coming, and then the interaction of the two. What I'm wondering is this, and that is if I were really to look at the Hamiltonian of uh, or let's just put it this way. If I were really to look at this as a probability wave, and I ask myself, well, where is the photon in that probability wave? How many possible positions would it have? The, the photon, within, excuse me, the photon in the probability wave. How many possible positions would it have? And is there an argument that states that it could have an infinite number of positions? That, that we have a discrete universe as far as ourselves staring into the quantum realm because we have that limitation of the speed of light. We have that limitation of Planck's radius. Uh, we have, that, we have that, that limitation of not being able to perceive down on the quantum level. But the, if we were to look at it as a reality in and of itself, 
could we argue that now I, I know some of you will object that that there's no such thing as the position of a photon while there is it's in its waveform. I understand that. But if I were to mathematically, in other words, if I were to say suddenly the photon is being observed, okay, and now we have an exact position. Um, what is that exact position? Is there not an infinity of possible positions, albeit unknown? And unknowable to us um, as long as it's in its waveform. If if that's true, and and physicists do not like to invoke infinities, and I respect that. Physicists also do not like um, people who are more into the realm of formal logic commenting on their field. I understand that too. Um, I'm the kind of person who tripped over his shoelaces walking into the physics lab. True story. But anyhow, um, I have taken enough physics that I, I think I can comment very generally that it, it, I don't see any limitation on invoking an infinity on this realm. So an infinity of possible positions, an infinity perhaps of possible positions with the electron. Now that's a little more uh, debatable. Okay, I, that I'm not so sure. But if there is, then in some sense, the interaction of the two, well, what's an infinity and all if not, right? And all if not and all if not, the interaction of the two might, if this model is accurate, conceivably be, um, well, understand you would have the interaction of any two particles. I know quantum physicists will hate me by invoking a billiard ball model of particles, but hear me out. The possible combinations of the two particles uh, would be, Two to the power of all if not. I mean, it would if if this model stands up and is logical, it could be it could be two to the power of all if not. That would be a whole other level of infinity above all if not. Why is this relevant? Well, electron shells are discrete; they are not continuous, and therefore the argument could be made that they do not correspond to a real number line, but would simply correspond to natural numbers or integers. But could they correspond to levels of infinity? Could they correspond to all if not, to, to the power of all if not, uh, and then the next combination above that, two to the power of two to the power of all if not, and so on and so forth, uh, which interestingly enough um, would also seem to have a natural correspondence to the continuum hypothesis uh, if the continuum hypothesis were proven to be true uh, conclusively to everybody's satisfaction. But I digress. Uh, the bottom line is it would at least correspond to those levels of infinity, or could, might correspond to those levels of infinity that Cantor considered to be natural levels of infinity or, you know, constructible levels of infinity. So again, I don't claim that this means anything, but I just find it interesting that um, if it were true, then it would it would actually correspond not just to mathematical Platonism, but to the infinities that people try to avoid in physics. Now, um, again, I, this is just speculation that I threw out there. It's really conjecture more than anything else. Um, my real answer to the question of why mathematical Platonism doesn't seem to correspond to quantum physics, at least on the r finite real number line, would be very simply that... that Platonism doesn't necessarily have to correspond to anything for it to be true. Uh, if we can construct it to be true in our own minds, I would say that there's a level of truth even in that. Thank you.